This video covers using timers and interrupts with an ESP32, NodeMCU, and MicroPython. As always, you can follow along with the written guide on micronote.tech, which is linked in the description of this video. If you arrived at this video after following the previous guide, programming an ESP32 NodeMCU with MicroPython, basic GPIO input and output, leave the breadboard setup the same. But I will quickly go over the setup here for everyone else. For this guide, you will need a breadboard, ESP32 NodeMCU, an LED, a resistor in the range of 46 to 100 ohms, and a button. Plug the node MCU into the end of the breadboard so that there is only a single column of pins on either side. Place the button at the other end of the breadboard so that it bridges the center gap. Place the LED into the breadboard so that the longer lead, the anode, is in GPIO pin 23 of the node MCU. Put the shorter lead, the cathode, into an empty breadboard row. Connect the cathode of the LED to one of the breadboard's power rails using the resistor. Then connect this same power rail to a ground pin on the node MCU. Connect one side of the button to GPIO pin 22 on the node MCU and connect the other side of the button to the ground rail. This completes the setup. Previously, when blinking LEDs and checking for button presses, this required us to use an infinite loop. Timers and interrupts allow for the same result to be achieved while also freeing room for other processes to run. Let's start by programming a simple timer that blinks the LED once every second. Open Thani and plug your node MCU into your computer with a USB cable. Navigate to Run Select Interpreter and make sure your interpreter is set to MicroPython ESP32 and make sure that your port is set to the port of your node MCU. If at this point you do not have a REPL indicated by the three greater than signs in the shell tab at the bottom of the window, press the stop button at the top of Thani. Enter the following code into the Thani editor. As always, you can also find this code in the written guide that goes along with this video on micronote.tech. This code initializes an LED like normal, then initializes a periodic timer with a period of 1000 milliseconds. Every period, the callback is executed, which is set as a lambda function that inverts the LED's state. Save the script to your node MCU as main.py and press the reset button on your device. You should see the LED start to blink once per second. Take note that unlike in the previous videos where we blinked the LED with an infinite loop, the REPL is still open for commands. This is one of the advantages of using timers. Let's move on to interrupts. Interrupts are useful for when code needs to be run in response to an event, such as a button press. Instead of continuously checking the state of the button through the use of an if statement in an infinite loop, an interrupt request or IRQ can be attached to a button pin to run an interrupt service routine or ISR. This achieves a more efficient and more effective program. Write or copy the following code into the Thani editor. This code again initializes an LED and also initializes a button on pin 22 with a pull-up resistor. Lastly, we attach an IRQ to the button with the trigger parameter being set to IRQ falling, which means a falling signal edge, and the handler parameter again set to a lambda function that inverts the state of the LED. I made a small error here, not should be separated from LED. Save the code to your node MCU as main.py and press the reset button to run it. The LED should toggle its state with each button press. Again, Take note how the REPL is still available and waiting for commands, just like when we used the timer earlier. If you continue to test the code by pressing the button, you may start to notice that some of the button presses don't toggle the LED once, but instead toggle it twice or more. This is due to the button's bounce. No real-world button can make perfect contact in an instant when pressed. Instead, buttons may bounce from high to low a few times before finally resting at their final position. If we want to have consistent programs, then we need to account for this. Let's change this code to account for bounce with the button. Leave the imports and the pin declarations the same. Then let's add a function called debounce. This function will check for consecutive signal readings, then return the signal value. If not all of the signal readings are the same, it will return none. I'm doing 32 readings for the script, but feel free to try other numbers to see what works for you. Then let's add a function called button callback. This function will do the same thing as the lambda function we used before, but this time check for bounce by calling the debounce function. Lastly, we need to replace the lambda function for the handler parameter in the IRQ with the button callback function that we just made. 
Save this new program to your NodeMCU as main.py and press the reset button. Now when pressing the button, you should notice more consistency with the toggling LED. You've now learned how to use timers, interrupts, and how to debounce a button. For a final exercise, leave the components on the board as is and use everything you've learned to write a program that toggles the LED once per second when the button is pressed and stops blinking the LED when the button is released. Use only an interrupt and timer. Do not use an infinite loop. You can find some hints and a solution at the very bottom of the written guide that goes along with this video and is linked in the description. This concludes this guide. If you want to check out more of our guides, head on over to micronote.tech. If you want to support the creation of more guides and kits, you can follow us on Twitter or subscribe to this YouTube channel. Or you can buy a kit from our Etsy store. Any support is greatly appreciated. Lastly, we want to start building Micronote into a learning community in a couple of ways. First, if you have any questions or discussion ideas, you can post them in the community discord. Second, we want to start adding community content to our website. If you've worked on a project that you think others can learn from, fill out the community submission Google form to be considered for a community post. Links to our social media, discord server, Etsy store, and community submission form can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.